Hello, uh, my name is Alan Young and the subject of this three nights and done is how satellites work. In terms of the contents for the uh, lecture, um, we're going to start with uh, what a satellite is um, and we're going to talk a little bit about what they are used for and then we're going to get into the different satellite orbits uh, the process for building and launching a satellite and then how satellites maintain their position in orbit once they get there. We're going to talk a, a, a lot about the payload, um, a little bit about um, how we communicate with satellites, antennas, some communications theory. Um, we're going to talk about link budgets and, and how they work. And then we're going to get into a little bit about the business models for satellite, uh, some of the issues with satellite communications, and finally what happens when a satellite reaches the end of its life. Obviously this is an introductory course, so we're not going to get into a lot of detail on any one of these subjects, and maybe um, future Three Nights and Done um, presentations can be um, spun out um, for any one of these. Subjects. So uh, let's uh, get started. What is a satellite? Um, well, quite simply, it's a man made object placed into orbit around the Earth. Um, it, you know, it's in orbit, um, so it's continuously going around, and we're going to talk a, 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 a little bit about what an orbit is and some of the mathematics in a light way of an orbit. Um, First suggested by a gentleman by the name of Arthur C. Clarke um, in a famous article that he wrote for Wireless World in 1945. Um, it's quite instructive to, to read that and I've put a link um, to the uh, article on this and so the presentation materials you should be able to uh, go and read that article and I suggest that everybody does read that, that article after um, they've gone through this uh, course. Uh, it amazes me, first of all, that he was able to predict um, pretty accurately everything that uh, you know transpired, and, and I guess a lot of that's due to the fact that the physics and the mathematics of orbits have been well understood for a long time. Um, it also uh, amazes me a little that he was able to, or he at least thought that it was, um, in, you know, it was more far-fetched to have the internet um, than it was to to launch a rocket into space. And and if you can think about it, at the time, um, you know, the space race hadn't started. Um, it was a dream to, to to go to the moon, and certainly launching things into orbit around the Earth was was considered um, way 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 off in the future. Yet it was still considered to be um, nearer to uh, possibility than uh, having uh, a, a ubiquitous internet. Um, I, I find that a little funny. But anyway, you should read the article when uh, you, you get a chance. In terms of what a satellite is, um, you can split a satellite essentially into two main parts. The first part is the, the payload, and this is really the reason for uh, the, the the satellite being launched in the first place it's the um, it's it's the, the the guts of the satellite that actually performs the mission and that's you know the word that's used in the industry um, so for a communication satellite for instance it, it provides the repeaters and amplifiers and um, for a for a weather satellite it would it would contain the uh, imagery and the and the sensors necessary to detect weather patterns um, etc so that's the you know the reason for being it's it's called the payload because typically that's what pays for the satellite it's the revenue generating part of the satellite and then there's the spacecraft that supports the payload and then it you know it is in space so it's called a spacecraft um, and the two components together uh, are, are what makes a satellite um, and so the spacecraft has a number of components on it, um, and in no particular order of importance, um, you know, all of these are, are, are important, um, and as important as one another. 
and the spacecraft will not work properly if all of these things are not functioning properly. So attitude control um, or the pointing. So the attitude control is what controls how accurately uh, the, the, the spacecraft is pointing towards the, to, towards the Earth or whatever else it's pointing at. Um, communications, obviously a critical component, and this is the, really the antennas and the amplifiers. So the, the, how do you send signals up to the satellite? How do you uh, get signals back from the satellite to Earth? The propulsion um, subsystem is really about how the spacecraft is maneuvered um, when it's in orbit. Um, you know, all spacecraft need to be um, have thrusters on them and, uh, and, and need to be adjusted um, in orbit. Um, they, they, you know, it's not quite the same as maneuvering something on on the ground, um, as we'll see, but. The propulsion subsystem consists of little thruster rockets um, that, that can nudge the spacecraft into, into corrective orbit. The power system, um, obviously, you know, it's got a lot of electronics on board, and so it needs to be powered. Um, and, you know, almost all satellites, if not all satellites, are powered using solar arrays. The, the sun is obviously... Um, a very good source of energy and um, solar arrays are used you know, almost exclusively. Um, but, but, but satellites also have batteries because there are times um, when the spacecraft or the satellite is, you know, can't see the sun and if you know, the sun isn't shining on the solar arrays there, aren't any, there isn't any power generated and therefore um, you need to have um, batteries to, to, to store energy to, to power the spacecraft while, while it's not um, in, in the way of the sun. Um, space is a pretty harsh environment. Um, it, you know, obviously it, it's pretty cold up there um, and because the sun um, shines on the spacecraft uh, you know, for certain parts of the day, um, you know, the solar rays will actually move but the body of the spacecraft will go through periods where the sun is shining directly on it and when the sun is shining directly on the other side and that um, creates thermal imbalances on the spacecraft which need to be managed uh, very carefully um, and so there's a thermal management or a temperature management system on board. And finally, telemetry tracking and command. This is um, obviously important and it, it, it Telemetry um, relates to um, status signals. Um, you know, every piece of equipment, every component on board a satellite generates status signals, um, which are then sent back down to the control center so that they can monitor the health of the spacecraft. Obviously, it's up there in space. There's not a whole. You can't. It's not like you can send a person there to fix something. So you need you need a very detailed telemetry. So that's the telemetry component. Tracking is also, you know, it sends signals out so that uh, the ground station can track exactly where the spacecraft is. And it's very important that the controllers know to a very, very high degree of accuracy where the spacecraft is at any time um, so that they can calculate what orbit it's in um, and, and take any corrective actions that are necessary. And finally, command. Um, you know, if, if they need to change something on board the spacecraft, they send command signals up. And though that whole subsystem is called the Telemetry Tracking and Command, or TT and C. In terms of the design criteria for a satellite, there, you know, obviously there are lots, but the three biggest ones are minimize mass. Um, it's important to use as little mass or weight as possible uh, on a spacecraft. Whilst it doesn't matter for the particular orbit that it's in, when it comes to uh, moving it around and firing thrusters, as we'll see later, um, it is very important to use as little mass as possible. Um, a typical satellite, um, a typical communication satellite in geostationary orbit, and we'll talk about what all that means um, later, um, you know, 2,300 kilograms, um, but, you know, honestly, it could easily be double that. Um, you know, they have 
really big satellites that you know are, are in the five metric ton range or, or, or bigger. And in terms of the power um, that, that they have in terms of electrical power, um, six kilowatts is uh, typical, but again, you know, it could easily be double that. So that's the type of range um, of, of, of size in terms of mass and, and power that you're, that you're looking at. And one of the things after minimizing mass that's important is to minimize the power consumption. Uh, you, you know, obviously don't want to overload the spacecraft and there is a limited amount of power on board the spacecraft and in fact as most people probably know solar arrays um, over their life um, will degrade so when the satellite is built it, it, it has a lot more um, power associated with it uh, with the arrays um, the, than it needs initially and there's, and there's, you know, there's a healthy margin built in there because Typically, the satellite's got to last um, 10 to 15 years um, in orbit, and so they've got to take into account any potential failures. Um, they've got to take into account the fact that the solar arrays will degrade, and so they build a, a healthy margin to start with. And so it's also important to make sure that the spacecraft is efficient with power. So, you know, a design goal is to minimize power consumption. And the last one is pretty obvious, really, uh, high reliability. Um, as I mentioned, it's not like you can send somebody up into space to fix something if it goes wrong. So the components that go onto a satellite um, have to be built to extremely um, high um, availability. Um, they are, you know, space specified. Um, components so they have to be able to work in extremely harsh environments and they have to be ultra ultra reliable and the whole system has to be ultra reliable and so what you find is is there are enormous amount of um, reliable um, redundancy built in to, to, to satellites so that you know every critical component and will have a spare um, you know, very, very few components on a spacecraft are single thread. Um, and the ability to switch in redundancy um, and make sure that there's never a time when you, you're reliant on a, on a single component is, is, is a major design criteria for, for a satellite. And so that, that's the basic component of, um, of, of a satellite um, and when I come back I'm going to uh, start talking a little bit about what satellites are used for. Okay, thank you.